Hello everyone, welcome back to ESL Drill. This is part 2 of the lesson The Journey. At the end of the first part, we learned that the author was trying to explain to us that uh, the admiration, the respect that the parents were receiving in the village was all because of his education and white collar job. Now let's see what happened after that. Let me read this out. My father would not like to see me carrying a trunk on my back and would be very hurt if I did so. I concluded that it would be better to let him carry it. Father was used to carrying luggage anyway. He was stronger and more skilled than me in these matters. I had never got used to physical labor, having stayed in hostels right from my childhood. So, in spite of my youth and strength, I was physically useless. I continued walking silently with father. We rested at two places on the way and had our tiffin, but we hardly talked. Finally, we reached Dirang. The bus from Tawang had not yet reached Dirang, and so we had some time in hand. We entered a tea shop and sat facing each other. Father appeared tired. I felt sorry for him, but couldn't bring myself to say anything. Now again, here the narrator was trying to justify his action of not carrying the luggage on his own. He also said that his father would be very hurt if he carried the luggage. And that was why he concluded that father should carry the luggage. Now look at this interesting sentence here. Father was used to carrying luggage anyway. Now this looks like a very common structure but we need to understand this. Look at this and look at this now. We have two structures. Let's discuss this first. Use it to do something. Now we use this when we talk about something that happened in the past and which does not happen now. If you take uh, a look at these examples, you will understand that better. He used it to smoke, but he gave up a year ago. It means he doesn't smoke now. I used to play kabaddi when I was a kid. It means I no longer play kabaddi. This was the habit I had, I mean this man had, and this was what I did in the past, but not now. So use it to plus V1 to talk about something that existed in the past which does not exist now. But look at this here. Be or get used to something or doing something. Now we use this to talk about something that you are familiar with. I mean that you find very easy to do because you have done it many times. Now if you go back to this here. Father was used to something. What? He was used to the activity called carrying luggage. He had done that many times and that was why it would be very easy for him to carry this trunk this time. This was what the narrator said. Now look at these examples again. I am used to getting up early. It means I have done that many times and it's easy for me to do so now. And don't worry, you'll soon get used to his sense of humor. Maybe this is the first time you... Uh, listen to his sense of humor, but you will get used to that. You will uh, he hear or you will listen to this many times. And now let's get back to this passage. I had never got used to physical labor having stayed in hostels right from my childhood. Again, the same structure but differently used here. Instead of be, we used get here. Got used to, never got used to physical labor. What was the reason? Because he had been staying in hostels right from his childhood. So in spite of my youth and strength, the meaning is, though he was young and strong, he was physically useless. Generally, a person who is young and strong should be involved in physical labor, but he avoided it. We learned that in the first part, he shunned physical labor. Okay, they stopped at two places on the way to Dirang, and they had tiffin, but they hardly talked. Hardly means here almost not. They did not talk uh, to each other at all. Finally, they reached and the bus from Tawang had not yet come to Dirang. So they were waiting. They had some time in hand. So they entered a tea shop and sat there facing each other. But the narrator says that he could not bring himself Sorry, he could not bring himself to say anything. It means he wanted to say something, but he could not get himself ready to say something to father. Let's move on and find what happened later. I asked the waiter to get us two cups of tea. Just as I was going to take my first sip, 
I heard father's voice. Do you have a pair of old shoes? Why? I asked. The road is uneven and full of pebbles. It hurts while walking. I looked at father's bare feet. Never having worn shoes, his feet had developed cracks and somehow resembled those of an elephant. I noticed this for the first time. I hadn't noticed that the road was uneven. I didn't have to since I was wearing a pair of hunting boots. I checked my wallet and saw I still had around 40 rupees with me. A pair of canvas shoes would cost around 12 rupees and the remaining amount would be enough for me to get to Bomdila. Now they ordered, I mean the narrator ordered two cups of tea and as he was going to take his first sip, sip is the small amount of liquid that you take, especially milk, coffee, tea, something like that. And father asked if the son had a pair of old shoes. He explained the reason as well. The road was uneven and full of pebbles. Pebbles are small stones. The narrator looked at the father's feet for the first time. They were bare feet. It means here the feet had nothing on them. I mean no slippers, no shoes. It was because father had never worn shoes. And as a result his feet had developed cracks and those cracks, I mean the feet somehow resembled those of an elephant. Resembled means here, look at this word, resemble to look like. Resembled means looked like. The feet of father looked like the feet of an elephant. The narrator noticed this for the first time. He had not noticed it because he was wearing a pair of hunting boots and he did not have to look at the road. He did not have to notice whether there were pebbles or not. So the narrator checked his wallet, wallet his purse and he had 40 rupees. And he wanted to buy a pair of canvas shoes. Look at that canvas is uh, a kind of strong fabric, strong cloth which is used to make uh, shoes, canvas shoes and they would cost around 12 rupees and with the remaining amount 28 rupees he would be able to get to Bomdila. Look at this here get to means reach, go to. Now he could go to Bomdila. You know Bomdila is the place where he was working as a government officer. Now let's move on to the next one. My father protested. Give me an old pair. You don't have to spend money on new shoes. I couldn't convince him to buy a new pair. Reluctantly, I gave him the hunting boots I was wearing. I then took out my pair of leather shoes from the trunk and noticed my father's face lighting up with contentment. Suddenly, he looked at me and said, Take care, write to us. Father wanted to say something, but the bus started moving. I saw my father gradually receding into the distance. I saw that the road we had come by looked like a giant motionless rope. Father would use the same road to go back home. Simultaneously, our journey started in two opposite directions. With me seated in the luxurious seat of a bus and father walking back with weary legs on the pebble strewn road. So when the narrator, I mean when the son decided to buy a new uh, pair of shoes, father said no to it. He disagreed. We discussed this word in the first part as well. Protested means disagreed. And instead he asked the son to give him an old pair of shoes. But son gave the shoes but he did that reluctantly. He gave the shoes reluctantly. Sorry, he gave the hunting boots reluctantly, unwillingly. It does not mean that he did not like to give the, give the boots to his father. But the thing was that he wanted to buy his father some new shoes but he did not say okay to it. That was why he was not happy. So he gave the boots uh, to his father unwillingly. So he took out his leather shoes and father's face was lighting up with, with contentment now. Look at this word contentment. We have already discussed reluctantly which means unwillingly. Contentment means satisfaction. Father was very happy, very satisfied now. And father also asked son to take care and write to us. I mean write to us means here write letters to them because that was the only way uh, through which they could communicate to each other. Now bus started. Father wanted to say something but could not say. I saw my father gradually receding into the distance. Look at this word receding, moving further away. 
So father was just standing there and the son um, uh, actually was moving because he was sitting in, in the bus. It looked like, from a distance, it looked like father was moving away. I saw that the road we had come by looked like a giant motionless rope. Now, the, uh, the road they had come by was just like some motionless rope. Now, it also suggests that, um, I mean, the, the silence that uh, prevailed in him, that existed in him, uh, and as a result, he could not say anything to his father. And our journey started in two opposite directions. Simultaneously, our journey started in two opposite directions. Simultaneously means you're happening at the same time. So the journeys of two people, the son and the father, started at the same time but in two opposite directions. Son was sitting in the luxurious seat of a bus. And father was walking back with weary legs. Look at this here. So the son was sitting in the luxurious seat of a bus and father was walking back with weary legs. Weary means tired. So with tired legs, where? On the pebble strewn road. So a road full of pebbles. Pebbles are small stones. Now, does it just uh, describe two physical opposite directions? No. It also describes two uh, kinds of lives, two different kinds of lives. One was the life of luxury which the son was leading and the other one was life of hard work. Father's life was a life of hard work. So it describes two different kinds of lives. That's the end of this lesson. I hope you have understood everything here. If you still have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section. I will try to respond to them there. And thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe if you have not done that already. I'll see you in my next video.